Let's take a look at the transaction API. So we're going to start with the ledger transaction class. And a ledger transaction represents a transaction on the ledger. And it has a lot of fields. So you can see here as inputs, outputs, commands. As we'd expect, these are fields we'd expect to find in a transaction. As well as some other fields that we won't look at in this bootcamp, like attachments or time windows. And we also have here a reference to the notary who will notarize this transaction and the ID of the transaction. So that's used for uniquely identifying the outputs of the transaction. And we're really going to focus in on the inputs, the outputs, and the commands here. So we can see that the inputs are a list of state and ref. The outputs are a list of transaction state. And the commands are a list of command with parties. Let's start by looking at the outputs. So the outputs are a list of transaction state. And a transaction state is basically a wrapper around a state that pairs the state itself, the data as it's called here. So you can see it's of type T, and type T is um, a class implementing contract state. It pairs the contract itself, uh, sorry, it pairs the state itself with a contract and a notary. Next, we can look at the input states. And so if we go to state and ref, it's essentially a class that wraps a state, a transaction state, as we just saw, with a reference to that state. And so remember that in a transaction, the outputs are being created fresh. So they're brand new, so they don't reference any existing state on the ledger. Inputs are states, just like output states are. But they're coming from some previous transaction. So we can either represent them as a state directly or we can just point back to them using a state ref. And if we look at what a state ref is, it's basically the hash of the transaction the state comes from, plus its index in the outputs of that transaction. And so this is useful later on when we're verifying chains of transactions because we know where the inputs came from and we can check the entire chain. And then finally, we have our command with parties object, which represents commands. And this is as expected. We've got a list of signers in terms of public keys. We've got a list of signing parties. So whereas signers is a list of public keys, signing parties is a list of actual parties, so actual identities on the network. And then we have a value, which is of type command data. And command data is just a marker interface that is must be implemented by anything that's a command. So it's just useful later on when we look at contracts so that we can pick out the commands easily within the transaction.